Hey guys, Murray here. Now is CN City. This is Murray Vation. All right, folks, let's cut to the chase here. What is the best era of cartoons? To be more specific, what is the best era of Cartoon Network? Regardless of what you or I think it is, this question is subjective and up to the individual to decide. If someone believes the powerhouse era is the best, that's their opinion. If someone believes the, <laughs> if someone believes the fall era is the best, <laughs> That's their opinion. But oh my psychic tandem war elephant. CN City was something else. I'm sure saying that alone already unlocked a vault in your brain full of childhood memories that you wish you could relive. I dropped the TikTok version of my powerhouse era video that I made on YouTube. And some of the comments I saw frequently were about CN City, even comments on my YouTube version. For as great as the era was, it seems to be constantly overshadowed by its much more popular successor, but understandably so. Anytime CN City is brought up, mentioned, heard about, you can feel the hype, the love, the passion that is behind this era. But why? Outside talks about the powerhouse era and other honorable mentions, why is CN City considered the best Cartoon Network era of all time? Possibly the best lineup of cartoons, period. What about it has people not thinking twice about it being the best? What are the notable shows, programs, and bumpers that got this era to the legendary status that it has reached? And what are some facts that you might have not noticed watching this era as a kid? I'll be going over all those things and more. And when I mean more, I mean everything C and City. You're going to find out some things about this era that you didn't know before. So don't go anywhere. Now is part one, the city. Then part two, the programming. This is Murray Vation. Cartoon Network CN City was launched on June 14th, 2004, succeeding the powerhouse era and is the network's fourth official era. The studio behind the American and Asian bumpers was Animal Logic. Inc. Apache and Trice Fallo studio were behind the European bumpers and the president of Cartoon Network during this time was Jim Samples. The thing about this era guys is a lot. Cartoon Network at this time had received a complete makeover. I'm talking about an entire U-Haul in style, in music, almost every facet that we've been accustomed to seeing. One of the biggest differences about this era hits you dead in the face. The network moved on from hand-drawn 2D backgrounds to then fully rendered CGI 3D backgrounds with the cartoon characters still remaining in their classic 2D models. Definitely an upside in technological value, if you ask me. The logo was different as well, doing away with the classic checkerboard style for a more modern design. The logo was abbreviated to just CN, with the fully spelled out Cartoon Network below it. Personally, nothing will ever beat the classic checkerboard logo, but I do understand Cartoon Network's desire to change things up. Now, let's address the elephant in the room here. Let's talk about the city. I must say for 2004, the quality, lighting, and shadowing for some of these vignettes were impressive. And I believe still hold up to this day. It's almost like they wanted the environment to be as super realistic as possible while keeping the characters involved as animated as possible. It's a very nice contrast, but as for CN City itself, Cartoon Network did its best to make the city as unique and as recognizable as possible by carefully placing the characters' signature set pieces all throughout the city. This postcard from Cartoon Network USA, the most animated place in the world, can give you an idea of which Cartoon Network characters dwelled in the city. Here we see the Sector 5 Treehouse from Codename Kids Next Door in the background, City Hall, Townsville, and Malv's Market from the Powerpuff Girls, Pop's Moon Palace from Johnny Bravo, Titan's Tower is way off in the distance in the bay and a few more unique locations that will be revealed in the bumpers later. 
The city is very much interconnected and the characters are freely able to interact with one another depending on the context of the bumper or can just exclusively interact with the characters associated with their show. Just like any city, there are cars, gas stations, grocery stores, fast food restaurants, diners, highways, subways, parks, movie theaters, cul-de-sacs, and much more. All of which you see your favorite characters interacting in the best way you know they would. The city is also shot in different parts of the day, from morning all the way to night, and Titan's Tower at night looks absolutely beautiful. The city is very much alive, and how the characters make the city come to life is a testament to that. Now, a reoccurring theme that I've brung up in my past two bumper videos was my upbringing in relation to cartoons. During the checkerboard era, I wasn't born to witness it. During the powerhouse era, I was born but not old enough to understand what I was watching. As for CN City, however, I can very much say this was the era where I was old enough to not only understand the programs I was watching, but even deem a few shows as my personal favorites. Now is part two, the programming. Then part three, the bumpers. This is Murrayvation. The programming that would premiere during this era would see the likes of Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, Hi Hi Puffy Amiyumi, The Life and Times of Juniper Lee, Camp Laszlo, My Gym Partner's a Monkey, and Ben 10. While seeing new blood during this era would add on to the fresh coat of paint for the network, we would unfortunately see the end of beloved shows that were introduced in previous eras. This included the Powerpuff Girls, Star Wars The Clone Wars, Megas XLR, Johnny Bravo, Evil Con Carne, and Samurai Jack. If you noticed, most of these shows were original products of cartoon cartoons and would stop production during this era. Billy and Mandy, Codename Kids Next Door, and Ed, Ed and Eddie would be the only cartoon cartoons still in production during this time. Due to popular demand, however, Cartoon Network would reintroduce the cartoon cartoon show then deemed a half hour program that featured older cartoon cartoons that were no longer regularly shown on the network. On top of that, Cartoon Network also revamped the top five, a product of cartoon cartoons that included newer originals such as Foster's Home and Camp Laszlo, and reruns of older cartoon cartoons. What I take from all this information is that Cartoon Network took away programming that the fans loved and the network did its best to listen to them by reintroducing it in a manageable way. In the same breath that I say Cartoon Network was listening to its fan base, during this era, the network would air la la. Oh, sorry about that guys, excuse me. Um, I'm gonna try again. Cartoon Network would air la I see what the problem is. I need a drink. Cartoon Echo would air live action programming. <laughs> Although CN City wouldn't be the first era to air live action content, they would be the first era to gradually promote it on a larger scale. The live action that was included during CN City included Who Framed Roger Rabbit, The Page Master, The Goonies, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Batman, Men in Black, and Osmosis Jones, which is probably my favorite on the list. Live action programming being aired on a network that literally has the word cartoon in it has always been a controversial topic amongst fans. Some like it, some don't. I don't care for it, although there were some nice outliers like Osmosis Jones and Roger Rabbit with their incorporation of 2D animation, but for the most part, I believe in sticking to the thing that got you to the dance. But clearly Cartoon Network had other motives at the time. At least at this point, the live action bug wasn't as bad as the yes and fall era, as I will explore in later videos. Now is part three, the bumpers. Then part four, international reach. This is Murray Vation. Now enough about that. Let's talk about the true star of the show here, the bumpers. And man, do I have a lot to say here. First off, the bumpers for this era are stuff of legend, literal gold. 
One of the biggest reasons for CN City's widespread appeal in the first place were the bumpers. When you look at how some of the vignettes play out with the jazz-like techno music, the background, the characters, and the short stories told in them, Cartoon Network really pulled you in with the metaverse, or should I say multiverse, that they've created within their bumpers. And I'm gonna talk a whole lot of different types of bumpers, some of which are my personal favorite. To begin, we're gonna start off with some of the more elaborate ones, the ones that obviously took some time to produce and edit. We start off with a 60 second bumper that basically is a montage of not only the city, but the characters that dwell in it. We get a shot of the Eds, a nice shot of Cartoon Network Theater, Robin and Raven waiting outside of it. Then we get a nice panning shot of Titan Tower where we see Robin and Cyborg playing multiverses. Just kidding. Professor X is leaving the grocery store like he does in the actual show, only for the Powerpuff Girls to show us why Tesla is not needed and they bring his car to him. We then are quickly brought to outer space where we catch a glimpse of Superman and then Porky Pig doing what I believe is accidentally ejecting Daffy Duck out of their spaceship. Then we catch a glimpse of everyone's favorite house cat, Tom, presumably trying to catch Jerry so he can make mouse pancakes, which honestly sounds delicious. Very interesting they chose to zoom into Jerry's hole for the next scene of Fred walking down the street, which then pans in on some creatures in the shadows and a haunted house, which the entire gang runs out of and rushes to the van. They speed off back into the city where they car splash Dexter, his robot, and Mandark. From one car to another, Eustace is fixing his with courage in the driver's seat. And then we get to the last sequence that sums up this entire bumper in a nutshell. Network. The last sequence was a mix of separate vignettes, all condensed and compacted together into a short little montage. So yeah, that was all one bumper, 60 seconds. And to be honest, that might have been the most elaborate bumper out of the entire era. Or so I think. That beautiful voice you heard at the end was the then 27-year-old California actress, Nicole Vicious. She was the official announcer for CN City's bumpers. However, in 2005, she'd be replaced in the evening now slash then bumpers by CN characters such as Billy, Blue, Raj, Monroe, Ami, and Number One. Now it's Teen Titan. Scary Godmother Halloween Spooktacular. This is Cartoon Network. Hi everybody, Blue here. Now it's the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy. Then it's Ed, Ed, and Eddie. This is Cartoon Network. Simply put, her voice just added on to the overall presentation of the era. The phrase she said, this is Cartoon Network would be the official slogan for the network. And I want you to keep that in mind for later. Now back to the elaborate bumpers. We have a vignette of the Eds building what appears to be a lemonade stand, like they do in their show, while Johnny appears on screen in a panic. He clearly is worried that he can't find his best friend, Plank, yes, a literal piece of wood, and cries out to him. He turns around to see that Plank is being used by the Eds to finish the stand. In a crazed pursuit, Johnny lunges at the Eds to get his best friend back. He walks away angrily with Plank, while the Eds are left in a pile of rubble. I guess he doesn't like lemonade. Ed and Eddie is one of my favorite shows of all time, and to see a bumper like this gave me those classic Ed boy vibes. I could definitely see the Eds being careless and lazy enough to use something like playing to build a lemonade stand to scam the entire cul-de-sac. Just like how it happens every time in the show, their attempted scam backfires on them. A solid bumper in my opinion. Next, we see a shot of Ray Ray Lee, the younger brother of Juniper Lee, attempting to karate chop Plank in half. Am I the only one who thinks Plank was done dirty in these vignettes? So yeah, his spidey senses go off and in one foul swoop, spears Ray Ray off camera. Headband comes off and everything and saves Plank. While this shows how down bad Johnny is for Plank, 
This was just placed here for comedic value, which was great. Next, we have a bumper of Billy in a dumpster eating trash. Oh, okay, moving on. Next, we have a news broadcast of an unknown vehicle holding up traffic on the freeway doing donuts, only for it to be Laszlo and Raj behind the wheel. The more interesting tidbits here, though, are the references to other shows and characters here within the live news report. Gotham City is chilly as always. The mayor issues a tax break on pickles because, you know, he has a thing for pickles in the show. And the Foster's home is caught up in some controversy with their senses, considering legit foster homes have to provide that sort of information to the government in full clarity. So much happened in this bumper and I just love how creative it was and the nods to other shows. Should I keep going? I'll keep going. Samurai Jack leaves the 2x4 hardware store, another plank reference which can be seen in the postcard and is working on his sweeping skills like he would with his katana. And it just so happens that the store now sharpens swords. Talk about a bang for your buck, right? A personal favorite of mine, Dexter leaves speech therapy with excitement, leading us to believe he can now better pronounce his words, considering he has a thick Russian accent. To our surprise though, he walks past Mandy who gives him a paper slip. With shock in his eyes, he realizes he has to say the very thing that has been the bane of his existence, Cartoon Network. Cartoon Network. Cartoon Cartoons. Not only does this bumper poke fun at Dexter's accent and inability to say Cartoon Network correctly, but also realize at the end of every bumper reveals the CN logo. Here not only does it leave us with the punchline of Dexter having to say this, but it also indicates that that's the end of the bumper. Cartoon Network may think I ain't caught on to their tricks, but they ain't slick for this one. Um, is the Super Banana Bomb Pop made of real bananas? If you're gonna make a tofu comment, why wasn't Beast Boy the one serving the ice cream? Cause you know, Beast Boy's a vegan, can't eat meat. <laughs> oh well. I love that we get to see a 3D animation within the treehouse. If there's anyone who would be at the 2x4 hardware store the most, it'd be the kids next door, considering their entire base is held up mostly by wood. Also, I just not realize if the hardware store is based off of Plank and they sell wood, doesn't that mean Plank is selling his own kind? Like, where's Johnny? Does he have a say in this? I'm sorry I put that in your head, but now you gotta live with that thought forever. As I said, these bumpers were a bit more elaborate and some I just threw in there to comment on. But with a few of them, the characters did things that were very reminiscent of what they did in their respective shows, which to me creates a sense of continuity and recognizable moments. As if CN City couldn't be any more engaging, we are then presented with these types of bumpers that are cinematic, even more thought out, and the characters engage in full on conversation rather than just one off comments. Take a look. <laughs> Oh, I know I had them. Hello, Professor. Do you have car trouble? Oh, it seems I've locked my keys in the car. That is serious. Jeez! Well, I... Is there a problem, Professor? Oh, hello, number one. I seem to have locked myself out of my car. And now he is out of cheese. <gasps> Crackers! I'll need some two-by-fours. I'll be right back. Bring more cheese! It's no problem. I'll just call my auto club. <laughs> Geniuses does it take to unlock a car door? <laughs> hey, hey, why don't you use some chemical X? <laughs> hey, Brainiac. Did you try the door? <laughs> Silly me. Uh, thanks, Mandy. Whatever. Right. Does anyone have some nails? The biggest thing I love about this bumper is Ed eating the professor's groceries while he's having everyone eavesdrop on his dilemma. It just had me like, Ed, did you really just do that? You'll bet your sweet bippy I did.
laundry, laundry day. day. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yep. You seem to like black shirts quite a lot. And it looks like you like it in pink. Oh, I'm just saying. Oops. Sorry about that. Laundromat talk at its finest and a bit of an awkward encounter between Jack and Johnny. You can definitely say the bumper may have ran a bit too long, but nonetheless, seeing Jack and Johnny interact is a treat of its own. Hey, fellas. Woo, nice ride. Uh, thanks. What do you think of my van? I call it my mystery machine. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, yeah. Yeah, customizer myself. Wall-to-wall -wall shake, four speakers, the works. The works, huh? <laughs> You're my kind of guy. Hey, what do you got there, a V8? V8000. It's kind of like a monster truck. M -m 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 monster truck? Cut it out, Scoob. You're ruining my street cred. Oh, sorry. Hey, guys, groovy ride. Want a lift? Hey, okay, dude, let's see what that jalopy can do. What's a jalopy? <laughs> <laughs> First off the line. Yeah, I'm sure they're feeling pretty silly right now. I can't ignore the fact that Coop and Jamie's level of riz is to the roof here. They were literally about to cuff Daphne in front of Fred, and they beat him in a race. 100% finesse here. Pickle flavored lollipops. What will they think of next? We give a hoot, don't pollute. <laughs> Wait for it. Now! Oh. They literally make a plastic bag one of the biggest villains in the bumper. Just goes to show you, you better recycle, kids. Wait! Hold the door! Hmm. Oh, come on, come on! <laughs> <laughs> transportation! Almost there. Come on, three, three. It's cool, we got it. Oh, man. Taking the express train. Oh, pickles. That's for you Juniper Lee fans out there. Personally, I was never fond of the show, but I may have to go back and check it out. Now, I want you guys to pay attention to this bumper in particular.
more time, can I say hello? Who is that? Oh! Hank! Will you please keep quiet? Very funny, guys. I'm done seeking. So you remember when I second guessed myself when I said the first bumper that I showed might have been the most elaborate bumper in the entire CN City era? This bumper right here may have topped that. A few things I love about this. Number one, I love how they chose Jimmy to be it in hide and seek. Assuming he's the wimpiest character in the era, that guarantees a win for everybody else. Number two, I love how desolate, dark, and empty the city is. It kind of gives the city this Silent Hill type of vibe. And you can tell Jimmy is just terrified by all of this. I bet you didn't expect a bumper to have an element of horror, did you? And number three, I love how this comes off more as a prank than it does a legit game of hide and seek. It feels like everyone is trying Jimmy. While this bumper has you to believe a possible jump scare or scary revelation will be shown, nope, it's all the characters hiding from him with some classic comedy at the end. It's a bumper that I thought had a nice level of suspense with a comedic payoff and it's one I consider my top three. I think it's worth mentioning that during this era, Cartoon Network had begun to show bumpers in relation to the seasonal holidays. Springtime had a lot of the characters dressed up in bunny ears with Easter eggs scattered throughout the city. And what better way to present Easter than to have Mr. Harriman hop around like the Easter bunny. The fall time presented the city at night in a spooky Halloween theme. The characters can be seen trick or treating in their Halloween costumes all while a mysterious green fog is roaming the city in each bumper. The music is altered to fit a spooky vibe for Halloween. Christmas time presented the city in a winter wonderland. The same scenes you saw of the city before are still the same scenes, but now covered in snow. There are Christmas trees and presents everywhere, and the characters are all in winter clothing to better fit the winter theme. The music here is altered to a more jolly Christmas beat. Article accelerator? Yes, Santa Eustace. You'll shoot your eye out, kid. <laughs> Stupid Adam Smasher. I just want to say Eustace reply was a reference from the movie The Christmas Story. No, no, I want an official red under cover and I should do it and get rid of my leg rifle. You'll shoot your eye out, kid. And you can best believe I'll be watching it 20 times over this Christmas. The most notable seasonal bumper of CN City was Cartoon Network Summer of 2005 and 2006. This would be a summer celebration that not only lasted from day to night, but also would feature originals like Camp Laszlo, Juniper Lee, and Squirrel Boy, like if you remember that show. This block would also premiere a new Cartoon Network original movie, codenamed Kids Next Door, Operation Zero. The next type of bumper were the now slash then ones. The powerhouse era featured now slash then bumpers that were not only 2D, but also had a super cartoony twist to them. This time around, CN City went with the CGI sets of the city. The shows featured from now slash then had characters from their show placed in these white discs with Nicole Vicious announcing them and saying the slogan of the era each time. I'd be remiss in not mentioning a key type of bumper here. Cartoon Network at this time created a lot of bumpers that were centered around their premiere shows of CN City. Puffy Ami Yumi had these concert-like bumpers where they're rocking out and all of the CN characters are jamming along with them. Ben 10 is there with Gwen and Grandpa and there's even a nice nod to the real life magazine made about the show. Juniper Lee has some pretty cool ones in there. Camp Laszlo features multiple bumpers within Camp Kidney. Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends has an abundance of bumpers. And with the My Gym Partners of Monkey bumpers, once again, I loved seeing places like Charles Darwin Middle School in a 3D perspective. It just looks rough and messy, like a legit jungle wood. It just makes me realize the more we progress through the eras, the more we see Cartoon Network give their original shows more of the spotlight, which is wonderful. Now guys, you have seen the elaborate bumpers, the cinematic bumpers, the holiday bumpers, the now slash then bumpers, and the premiere show bumpers. But there's one type of bumper in particular that I think makes the biggest statement out of them all. <laughs> Ironically enough, these are the type of bumpers that don't say anything at all. No punchline, no music, no characters. Just empty set pieces 
with the only audio being the ambiance of the environment. Take a look. With these types of bumpers, let's call them silent bumpers, it really leaves you with the impression that you're seeing objects and landmarks that were important because these were objects and landmarks that these characters interacted with each episode that made them identifiable and unique. The lack of music and characters gave these short bumpers a super immersive and intimate feel to them. And for the bumpers that did feature characters, they didn't say a word and they just continued on about their day. And this has to be said, for the Ed, Ed and Eddie silent bumpers, I found them to be very reminiscent of the opening scene to the big picture show. The way the cul-de-sac is empty and silent, the parallels were just too strong to ignore. And the big picture show was a great movie and a great finale to, as I said, one of my favorite shows of all time. All of these bumpers collectively answered a question that you and I didn't know we wanted answered. What is going on in the world when your favorite characters aren't on some big crazy adventure, fighting off some giant monster, or just involved in their exclusive show? Well, the k and are going to the hardware store to fix up their treehouse so their defenses are strong. The Eds are going to the candy store. Grimm is at the cemetery. It never dawned on me that characters needed to wash their clothes. The middle of nowhere deals with occasional sandstorms. And you can best believe Tom is still trying to catch Jerry. Guys, like Nicole said all throughout this era, this is Cartoon Network. To add on to that, this is Cartoon Network at its purest form, on its A game, in its prime, at its best. And if the level of creativity and quality put in these bumpers doesn't prove that, then I don't know how else it can. This may be a hot take depending on how you feel about it, but CN City by large is the closest you're going to get to a Super Smash Bros adaptation. Multiverses might make some noise, but from all the bumpers I've watched in wide character selection, CN City planted seeds of curiosity in my head of what Super Smash Bros could have been like if Sakurai and Miyamoto did a partnership with Cartoon Network. Outside of Plank's hardware store, I haven't even begun to mention how throughout the city, there are multiple references to different characters and forms of different services. Like how ironically enough, Eduardo provides English lessons, probably something Dexter should have looked into. Robin has his own energy drink. Fudd owning his own electrical store. Pepe Le Pew having his own dance studio. Yugi Muto being placed on the front cover of a home tour magazine. Or the Grim Reaper reminding you to put your seatbelt on. Or else. I could go on and on with the endless references within these bumpers, but that alone I feel would need its own video. I would love to know what you find if you come across any more references, but we're gonna move on for now. Now is part four, international reach. Then part five, trivia. This is Murray Vation. I'ma be honest, one thing I've failed to realize in my previous bumper videos is the international appeal that Cartoon Network attracted. Other parts of the world like Latin America and Japan would have their own set of voice actors for CN City, adding on to the widespread appeal for this era. I think it's cool that people in different parts of the world could watch and enjoy something like this in their native language. It's like I'm not the only one that was able to enjoy this. If you were wondering what type of media is still available besides the bumpers and commercials, a Flash website that was made for CN City in 2005 was discovered. The website consisted of the CN City brochure, however the map featured a legend that would present you with information about the premiere shows of CN City. Future shows like Squirrel Boy, Andre Class of 3000, an interview with the creator of Squirrel Boy, CN City's featured movie, codename Kids Next Door, 
Operation Zero, press releases for the shows, wallpapers, trailers, other gimmicky features, and even contact info. I honestly wish more video games and TV shows would have pieces of interactive media like this. CN City by far and large had the most dedicated media and you'll be surprised by how many people actually appreciate stuff like this. I'll leave a link for the website and YouTube video so you can check out <laughs> what dedication looks like. Earlier in the video, I know I briefly mentioned Jim Samples, but I really would like to give him some more recognition based on some of the things he was responsible for, good and bad in regards to Cartoon Network. On August 22nd, 2001, Samples became the executive vice president and general manager for Cartoon Network on a worldwide scale. Under his leadership, original series that were introduced during the powerhouse and CN City era that I've already mentioned would be obvious hits on the network. To add on to that, Jim Samples would be credited for the launch and success of Adult Swim. His partnership with 20th Century Fox would put Family Guy back into production as the anchor for the lineup of Adult Swim. For as good as his accomplishments were, his shortcomings would be almost of the same degree. Jim Samples was partially responsible for the controversial airing of the live action, quote unquote, <coughs> cartoon inspired movies of 2005 which i also already covered from one controversy to another samples would resign from cartoon network on february 9th 2007 following a bomb scare in boston caused by packages left around the city that were part of a marketing campaign promoting one of adult swim's most popular shows aqua teen hunger force with circuit boards, wires, and batteries. Police blew some of them up as a precaution, but none contained explosives, and now we know why. They turned out to be this thing, outdoor lighted signs to promote a movie coming out in May based on an animated series on the Cartoon Network called Aqua Teen Hunger Force. These signs have been up in nine other cities since mid-month. Turner Broadcasting says it has now told uh, Boston police what these things were, and it says it's sorry they were ever thought to be dangerous, Brian. Happy it's a false alarm. Pete Williams in our wash. Following his resignation, Stuart Snyder was named the new EVP and general manager. Regardless of not ending on the best of terms, it's important to realize without Jim Samples, we maybe would not have seen the widespread success that Adult Swim would gain. In the same vein, we maybe would not have seen the eventual decline of the network due to lack of focus on original animated series in exchange for live action content. Most importantly, without him, we maybe would not have seen CN City. It could have been a very real possibility. It just goes to show you, you can have a very great idea for animation, but it's the ones in the suits and ties that decide what appears on TV. If you don't have someone in charge who understands what the fans want, or understands the type of cartoons that the fans want to see, the company will suffer from it. That doesn't just apply to cartoons, it applies to all forms of media entertainment. I do feel Jim Samples did understand what the community was yearning for and gave them what they wanted. A few misfires happened that will grow to be exponential and ultimately costed Mr. Samples his job. He would go on to be involved with other networks and leave Cartoon Network in the past. However, people like myself, and I'm sure you watching this, still feel the weight and impact that his involvement had on us as kids. In this case, you gotta take the good with the bad, and with the good we had gotten with this era, I am forever grateful. Now is part five, trivia. Then. The conclusion. This is Murray Vation. Moving on to the last section of the video, guys, I'm gonna dabble into something that I will be adding to future bumper videos moving forward. And that is trivia. What that means is I'll be sharing with you the more nuanced facts about CN City that you probably didn't know before. This could range from basic facts to extremely notable ones. And today I'll be sharing eight. Starting off, the main location of the bumpers was the city of Townsville from the Powerpuff Girls. Sector 5 Treehouse, Billy's House, which can be seen in the postcard thanks to the power plant in the background, Dexter's House, Charles Darwin Middle School, Pop's Moon Palace, The Bag Farmhouse, Foster's Home, The Cul-de-Sac, Andy's House, and other places were redesigned for the CN City bumpers. In the Dexter's Laboratory bumpers, his laboratory appearance is based on his appearance in the episode Soul Brother. For unknown reasons, Grimm, 
Billy and Mandy resemble their grim and evil designs in some of their own bumpers, as opposed to their more refined looks from their solo show, The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Many bumpers feature cameos by Irwin, a side character in Billy and Mandy, and he even got some of his own bumpers. This may have indicated his popularity amongst fans. This is no surprise to me considering his charm and unrelenting pursuit of Mandy was what made him stand out. Hey Mandy! I rest my case. Although characters from Johnny Bravo and Samurai Jack appear in the city, both shows do not have their own bumpers. The reason for this is unknown. Aku, Bunny Bravo, Starfire, Velma, Number 5, Fuzzy Lumpkins, Kiva Andrew, the Time Squad characters, the Evil Con Carne characters, the Justice League characters, and some other characters do not talk in any of the bumpers, but appear numerously. Assets created for the Ed, Ed and Eddie bumpers were reused for the Squirrel Boy bumpers, since both shows took place in neighborhood settings. In the Subway bumper, a poster advertising Eduardo's English lessons can be seen with a phone number, which is the actual phone number of animation supervisor G.F. Valent. Valent had recorded a goofy voicemail with an Eduardo imitation if anyone ever called his number, but no one called to his disappointment. He only revealed this information on the Cartoon Network City Facebook page in 2021. Once again, this only adds to the amount of dedication, love, and uniqueness put into this era. And lastly, but also my favorite, according to animation supervisor G.F. Valent on his CN City Facebook page, his team had originally pitched to make a TV show based on the CN City era, but such plans never materialized for unknown reasons. Now is the conclusion. This is Murray Vation. To everyone's shock, however, this era would be defunct with its primary branding ending on April 2nd, 2004 and secondary branding on May 31st, 2007. No matter if it's sports, TV shows, or movies, the conversation about which era is the best will always emerge, and Cartoon Network is no exception to that. CN City was an era full of lore, creativity, comedy, innovation, and interpretation. But I think someone in the comments of one of the CN City bumper collections said it better than I ever could. Back when Cartoon Network had soul. Honestly, this statement couldn't be any more true, because with what we'd get in the future, I'd say things got rather... Yeah. To this day, people still reminisce and talk about this era. So much so, the city appears in an episode of OKKO OK named Crossover Nexus. CN City may be dead in theory, but it's not dead as far as a fan base, and as far as fan interaction, and as far as passion. There is an official CN City Facebook page and Twitter run by current member of Animal Logic, the studio behind CN City's American bumpers, GF Valen. Apparently every week, he releases various screenshots and videos of unreleased CN City content where you can give requests and even interact with him if you so wish. If that's not enough, you can access a website that allows you to see specific bumpers of different shows, some of which have no music and are in their unedited versions, different locations throughout the city, and all the short films that aired during this era. And guess what? Not only is this website being updated with new content just like its Facebook and Twitter, but most of the bumpers and screenshots are in high definition. Some of the bumpers I assume never made it to TV, so I highly recommend you check it out. So is this era really dead? I probably will not say so. But all that there is left to say regarding this is that CN City is still alive, and that's thanks to not only GF Valent and Andre M from Animal Logic, but most importantly, the passionate fans that still talk and have questions about this era. I'll also leave a link to this website in the description. When people think about Cartoon Network, they think about this era and a time in their childhood that was special, but also filled with nostalgia and endless enjoyment of cartoons. When the question is brought up about which Cartoon Network era is truly the best, as I said, that answer is up to you. But as for me, CN City might just be 
the greatest era of all time. The checkerboard era, the powerhouse era, and now CN City? Cartoon Network to me is running on a 3-0 record, which is really good. But would Cartoon Network be able to capitalize on this momentum? Would they be able to create that same greatness through their next era? We'll just have to find out on the next episode of Dragon Ball We'll just have to find out in the next bumper video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Believe me when I say I did my absolute best to make this the best video on here, the best video on my channel. And hopefully by you watching, hopefully all the way through, you were able to sense that and feel that. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and comment down below. What is your favorite bumper or reference from this era? Do you feel CN City is the best era of all time? I love to know down below. Once again, thank you. God bless you. I'll see you in the next video and don't hate. Motivate. Wow. Where's that again? Cartoon? No, that's not it.